Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to discuss the answers to the quiz on the tetralogy of Philod. Before I start with the questions, let me draw the heart. These are the lungs and let's assume this represents the other organs of the body. Question number one. Which of the following features of the tetralogy of Philod primarily determines the severity of the disease? A. Size of the ventricular septal defect b. Degree of pulmonary and fundibular stenosis c. Overriding aorta d. Thickness of the right ventricular wall The correct answer is b. We all know that cyanosis is bad for the patient because there is less oxygen being delivered to the tissues. In my video on the tetralogy of flow, I had mentioned that greater the stenosis, greater the cyanosis. This is because of two reasons. Firstly, when the outflow tract here is narrow, lesser blood goes to the lungs to get oxygenated. So, the blood coming back to the left atrium is not very rich in oxygen and hence, very little oxygen is delivered to the tissues. Secondly, narrower the outflow tract, greater is the pressure built up here. This causes more blood to get shunted through the VSD, increasing the cyanosis. Although the other three options are features of the tetralogy of flow, they aren't direct indicators of the severity because they are all dependent on the degree of stenosis of the pulmonary outflow tract. Let me show you how. If the stenosis here is high, more deoxygenated blood flows through the ventricular septal defect leading to an overriding aorta. Also, more the stenosis here, greater is the workload on the right ventricle. So, the thickness of the right ventricular wall is also directly related to the degree of stenosis. Question number 2. Why does the cyanosis reduce when the patient assumes a knee chest position? Option A. Increase in inhaled oxygen. Option B. Increased afterload. Option C. Decreased preload. To interpret this, we need to make sure we know what each of these things mean. Preload is the amount the heart muscle stretches when it gets filled. Greater the blood that comes to the heart, the more the heart muscles will stretch and hence greater will be the preload. Afterload is the amount of pressure that the heart must work against in order to pump blood out of the heart. Keeping these things in mind, let's look at what will happen in the Nietzsche's position. The pressure in the abdomen will increase. This results in higher afterload, which means there is high pressure here, so less deoxygenated blood will flow through the ventricular septal defect and lesser will be the cyanosis. At the same time, since the pressure is higher in the abdomen as compared to the thorax, it will increase the amount of blood returning to the heart from the inferior vena cava. This will improve the cyanosis because more deoxygenated blood is coming into the right heart to find its way to the lungs to get oxygenated. So, an increase and not decrease in preload will improve the cyanosis. Question number 3. Tetralogy of float is caused by the abnormal migration of A. Ectoderm B. Endoderm C. Neural crest cells There is no explanation as this is just a fact that we have to remember from embryology. Question 4. In patients diagnosed with the tetralogy of float, what gives the heart a boot-shaped appearance on chest x-ray? A. Right ventricular hypertrophy B. Ventricular septal defect C. Pulmonary and fundibular stenosis D. Overriding aorta The answer to this question is right ventricular hypertrophy. The heart normally looks like this and this is a boot. So for a heart to look like this, this region should undergo hypertrophy. The right ventricle is the most anterior part of the heart, hence if this part undergoes hypertrophy, it would look something like this.
So we can conclude that it is because of the right ventricular hypertrophy that the heart looks like a boot on chest x-ray in patients with tetralogy of flow. Ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta, and pulmonary infundibular stenosis are not directly responsible for this. Question number 5. While auscultating the chest of a patient with tetralogy of flow, you happen to hear a holosystolic murmur in the left lower sternal border. What do you think caused this murmur? A. Atrial septal defect B. Overriding aorta C. Ventricular septal defect D. Pulmonary infundibular stenosis The answer to this question is option C. This is the heart and this is the sternum. Like I said earlier, the right ventricle is the most anterior part of the heart. So when blood flows through the ventricular septal defect, it is best heard at this point, the left lower sternal border. The atrial septal defect is characterized by a systolic ejection murmur at the left second intercostal space. Atrial septal defects are not classically seen in a patient with tetralogy of flow. An overriding aorta is basically a result of increased blood flow in the aorta since it receives it from both the right and left ventricles. I have explained this in detail in my previous video. Pulmonary infundibular stenosis will have a systolic murmur best heard at the left second in the space. We have now come to the end of our discussion about the tetralogy of Fallot. Do let me know if you have any questions. I hope this method of active learning is helping you guys. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for med videos and activities. I post my quizzes on Instagram so make sure you follow me there. And check out my video on asthma for which a quiz is coming up very soon. Thanks for watching.